Peggy Jean, take a bow. Peggy is a native of Spartanburg. We were married at the First Baptist Church right up the hill here uh, 38 years ago. 40 years ago. <laughs> By Dr. Alistair Walker, and uh, we haven't looked back. That was a great day, and I remember Peggy back then. This place didn't look quite like it does now. In fact, everywhere we've been, Peggy and I have been all over the state. I love this state. I could go all over the state from town to town talking to people all day and all night. It's the most exciting thing going on in the country right now. But things have changed so in the past few years. We're on the way up. And the reason we're on the way up is because we have the right team leading the economic growth, the public safety, the education in South Carolina. And a big part of that team you see standing right here today. This is the A team. This is the South Carolina A team. There's not a better team with more determination, more experience, more, more skill, more ethical behavior, more confidence in the people of this state than you see standing right here. So I want to congratulate all of these people for the work they've done and want to thank them for being here for this endorsement. I've gotten a number of endorsements I'm proud of, none more so than these here, but you need to know I've been endorsed by the National Rifle Association, been endorsed by Citizens for Life, been endorsed by the one and only President of the United States, Donald Trump. And a lot of the things that I'm doing are based on the same thing that he sees. What he sees for the country is what I see for South Carolina. I think we form an integral part of it. I think because of who we are, what we have, and what we've done over the years, the teams we've built, the relationships we have, I think we have more potential than any place in the United States. And I'm not the only one who thinks that. If you look around to the states around us, they're all watching us. They're watching to see what we do because they want to stay ahead of us. North Carolina was watching us, and they cut their taxes. The next thing I know, Georgia's cutting their taxes. Well, it's time for us to cut our taxes, and I want to cut them $2.2 billion. That's 15%. And what will happen? That's on everybody. We'll have an economic growth like we're having in the country when Donald Trump cut the, tax, cut the, the federal taxes. We need to do the same thing with the state taxes. It worked for President Kennedy. It worked for President Reagan. It worked for President Trump. And it's going to work again for South Carolina. Also, ladies and gentlemen, the, the backbone of our society is formed by those who wear the uniform, whether they're in the military, whether they're first responders, whether they're law enforcement, any kind of peace officer, those are the people that form the backbone bone that keep us strong and keep us safe. We can never pay them enough for what they do. We in this in our state, we got about a six foot bed of need, needs with about a four foot blanket. The way to grow out of that is through economic growth. But one thing we can do for them now is to cut those income taxes to zero on their retirement pay. And I intend to get that done as soon as the legislature will get it done with me. Two other things that we are getting done now is we're not going to be a sanctuary city. We're not going to have any sanctuary cities in South Carolina because of action that the men and women behind me are getting ready to take when the legislature comes back. Also, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to start with a program, a start to have a certified, trained law enforcement officer in every school, in every district, in every county in South Carolina. That way the children will be safe and the parents, parents will have confidence they're safe and we can get on with the education in South Carolina, which is essential to our growth. In that vein, there have been two big, two big changes. One of them is the legislature has now given me the authority subject to the approval of the voters for a constitutional amendment to appoint the superintendent of education. What will that do? That does not mean that our current superintendent are, are doing a bad job. What that means is that for the first time, the accountability for education will rest with the highest officer in the state, and that is the governor. That means we'll make progress with charter schools, school choice, all kinds of schools, strong public schools. I know that we need good principals, we need good teachers. If you have that, you can teach the children. I intend to get that done. Also, the legislature has given me the authority to remove highway commissioners if they're not doing the job, the Department of Transportation. First time a governor has had this authority. I intend to use it if necessary, but what I intend to do, and we've begun this, is to be sure that everyone knows, you included, 
where your money is going. It's going to roads. You're going to know which ones. They're going to be done by priorities. Not going to be any monkey business. And we're going to see to it that our roads and bridges are safe and ample in South Carolina for this great prosperity that's coming our way. We can't even keep up with it. We're growing so fast, we're growing faster than any place in the South, and the South is growing faster than any place in the United States. We're, we're outrunning our headlights. Well, we're going to keep up with it because we have the capacity. Through our research universities, partnering, partnering with the technical colleges, which partner with the high schools, we can build the workforce to take this state into the future for future generations, and there's no stopping us. So, ladies and gentlemen, as was mentioned before, to finish up, we are winning. Just in the time I've been in office, we are winning dramatically. And this started years ago with others who came before us, others who came before those who are here. But we've been headed into the same direction, and now we've caught fire. And just since I've been in office, we've had a greater economic expansion and prosperity than ever before. It's off the record books. Over $6 billion in new investment since January of 2017, and over 20,000 new jobs in counting. And we still have more businesses that want to come, that want to grow, that want to expand. So, ladies and gentlemen, when you're winning like this, when you're winning like this, six billion in new money, twenty thousand in new jobs, you don't fire the coach and hire a rookie. No, you keep that coach, give him four more years, and that's what I'm asking you to do. Four more years. Four more years. And thank you so much for being here, and thank all of you. Yeah, we're going to do it again, too. <laughs> some, some people would call this your opponent's home turf. What do you say to that? I think the whole state is my home turf. I love South Carolina. I lived here all my life except for one year or so in Washington with uh, Strom Thurmond. No place I want to be. I'm not going anywhere. This is my home. I'm proud of South Carolina, and I know we can go to, straight to the top, and I'm looking forward to helping us get there. That's right. From the president. Can you talk about the nature of that call? It's a very nice call. I enjoy talking to him. <laughs> <laughs> what about the subject matter? Well, we were talking about the greatness of South Carolina and the greatness of America, and he loves the people of South Carolina. He knows that that presidential primary in South Carolina, which he won, where I endorsed him and worked hard for him, and did others here, he knows how important that was in his success and how important it is thus to the success of this country. And he loves South Carolina, loves the people. I've heard him say it a thousand times. I was up there just a few weeks ago. We were working on getting port money, which we got, $49 million. We're looking to get more for 526, for I-73. We got a lot of things we can do with the, with the administration, with the Trump administration, and with the president who understands the importance of South Carolina to the future of this country. You're, you're promising no sanctuary cities in None. South Carolina. Um, I know you made your intentions clear uh, with the National Guard going down to help with the situation at the border. With this recent development with kids being separated from their, their parents down there, what do you make of that? Do you still stand by your decision? Yes, sir. The president wanted troops at the border. South Carolina sent troops to the border. I called the two governors in Arizona. In Texas, uh, Greg Abbott, by the way, was a, a former attorney general. He and I served together. I know, know him well. He's a good man. He asked for help. We sent it. The president wanted it, so we sent it. If they ask again, we'll keep on sending it. I agree with the president 100%. If we don't have secure borders, if we don't have a country that doesn't have borders, you don't have a country. So we must secure the borders. Now, the president is determined to see that it's done in the right way. What he's doing right now is he's following the law, unlike some other chief executives who would not follow the law. So he's following the law. As we follow the law, there are going to be things that need modification, things that need improvement, things that need strengthening. There are a lot of things that need done, but we must take steps to protect that border. Otherwise, we don't know who's coming in, we don't know what their backgrounds are, don't know what their intentions are, and we simply cannot that, let that happen to the people of this country. <laughs> Question. On that, on the note.
note of that policy. If the people of South Carolina disapproved of that policy of separating families at the border, would you work to change it? Well, the, the laws are the laws. It, when someone breaks the law, it, as you know, uh, throughout history, when people break the law, they're separated from someone. Now, these are situations where you have young children. Of course, those situations existed throughout after the law. But again, the, the, the law needs to be enforced. We need to have borders. We need to have strength at the borders. And this is a process of determining the best way to do that. As you know, the president has offered compromises. He's often offered changes, uh, and they have not been accepted. But he's going to continue to do so, and I support him in that effort. Governor, uh, we've heard that one of the candidates running for the fourth uh, congressional district makes an accusation. You were trying to suppress votes in this region. What's your response? That's total not to say I was trying to suppress votes. That accusation. Right? Yeah, that accu well, that, that, of course, is total nonsense. There's not a bit of truth to it. I think that maybe had, had been demonstrated, but uh, that in you're talking about Mr. Hamilton. He called just a few minutes ago and apologized for the whole thing. You might want to call him up and ask him. But that's nonsense. But let me tell you, that's the kind of thing we're seeing in this campaign. All I ask the candidates to do is stick to the truth. Let's just stick to the truth. I'm sticking to the truth. I want everybody else to stick to the truth. I, we've had a lot of untruth in this. And you know what? You know what? Everyone's talking about ethics and corruption. The heart of corruption is the lack of truth. A lie. An untruth. A misstatement, an intentional misstatement. That is the heart and the essence of corruption. And I would ask all candidates, above all things, to tell the truth. Okay, then. The boss here says that's it, so I'm sure she's right.